Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Bim Pure Live. I am host Nicolas Tellier. I'm an architect, a Bim specialist, and the founder of Bim Pure. Uh, we've got a great guest for you today. If you were watching live today on January 29th, you can type in in the chat where you are uh, watching from. Uh, uh, meanwhile, before we move on to the guest, a couple of things to mention and talk about. Uh, today's sponsor is Bertools, creator of great plugins for Revit. And each week, we're going to explore a different tool that they're making. And this week, it is the Clash Preventer tool. Uh, it has a free trial, and then it's $20 per user per year. And this is real-time Clash detection in Revit. As you can see here, if we have the plugin installed and you add a new element to the view, you can see immediately this dialog pops up and the elements all colorize. So instead of running the Clash report after it's been done, you see it immediately and you get warned that, that clashes happen on the project. Uh, and you can uh, explore uh, both of them. You can see they remain uh, colored. There is the clash color coding. You can modify the options. If you go to behavior first, you can decide if you want the view to zoom in and colorize, and then you can change the colors. In this case, we switch to using a blue and orange instead. And then if you, you can colorize all the clashes, if you don't want to see the colors anymore, you can reset the color overrides to get rid of them by going to that menu. Uh, then you, if you work with Navis work, you can go inside of Navis work, export to an XML, XML report, go back to Revit, import that Navis works report and uh, select that HTML file that you've got from Navis work and every single clash that it had been detect detected is going to be highlighted in the different colors. So you can visualize them directly inside of Revit. There's a real-time parametric clash filtering built in. Basically, it means that you can remove some clashes. By example, you could say, I want to get rid of all the clashes from a pipe smaller than 15 meters colliding with a non-structural wall. So in this case, uh, the clash won't be colorized. Uh, so that's Bertolt's, that's the clash preventer. They do have a free uh, trial. So check that out at bertools-developers.com. The link is in the video description and you'll also find a coupon code both for single users and multiple ones. So thank you so much for Bertools to Bertools for sponsoring this episode of uh, Being Pure Live. So let's let's see where people are watching from. We've got Ashley from Cincinnati, Tiana from Madagascar, Giancarlo from Mexico, the BIM surgeon from Chicago, uh, Kenneth from Oslo, uh, Ryan from Jacksonville, Florida, Alejo from Barcelona, uh, Krista from Missoula, Montana. Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, tuning in live. And next week, the episode is going to be with Joaquim Victil. He is the CEO at Reop, a BIM consultancy based in Norway. And the topic of the episode is going to be BIM in the age of AI. I saw Joaquim speak at Autodesk University about this topic, about the future of our industry under AI. It was extremely interesting. And Real does a lot of interesting things. They have their own plugin. They work with uh, OpenBIM with their clients. Uh, so plenty to talk about, but uh, more specifically about their vision for AI and how it's going to mix up with BIM. That is next week at the same time, 3 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Uh, all right, who else do we have live? Let's see. Emilio Velasco from Virginia, Popescu from Romania. Okay, a couple more things to show up before we move on with the guest. Uh, last Monday, we've released uh, an article that describes the principle of Windows families, and that's because uh, recently we've released our BIM Pure Windows collection for Revit. And there's a free sample that you can uh, download. It's a window family that includes multiple features. You can have multiple uh, opening options, such as Kaysman and Hopper awning, and easily switch between one and the other, switch between multiple trims and still nested uh, options, uh, clean graphics included in both metric and imperial. This is, uh, you can get this one for free. And it's a sample from our big collections available with Vimpure membership. So get this free window sample at vimpure.com slash window sample. The link is also in the video description. Uh, today's guest is Alfonso Monedero. He's currently based in London, UK. He's the head of BIM at Etherwick Studio. Uh, previously also worked at Woods Baggett as a studio design technology uh, manager and at Edward Williams Architect as a BIM manager as well. So I'm welcoming 
Uh, Alfonso, how are you? Hi, Nick. Uh, I'm very good. Thank you. Uh, how are you doing? Thank you for inviting me to your uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, it, it, thanks for uh, coming in. I, I'm just um, curious, how did you end up the, the head of BIM at Editorwick? Where did your interest of BIM come from? So that's a funny one because uh, I'm an architect by training from Spain and due to the big crisis we were suffering after the 2009, I just started moving out of Spain. I went to India working as an architect then I moved to Chile. I was there for three years working as a design architect and I decided to move to the UK uh, and I was looking for design roles, head of design. That was my previous role in Chile. And it was becoming very complicated, but I had a rapid course of 50 hours. So one con uh, career consultant saw it and said, you know what? I think you can do a career in BIM. I have a position in Heatherwick, uh, and they need uh, rapid people. And that's how I started uh, my BIM career as a BIM technician, like in the complete bottom of the chain. <laughs> yeah, and you made your way up to the head of BIM. Uh, so before we move on with uh, the more uh, everything you have to show us, um, I'm curious, I recently saw the newest multiple articles about uh, Heather Wick's philosophy. There was an article on Wired magazine about how boring cities are bad for mental health. So if all the buildings look exactly the same, it, it's not good for us. And how Heather Wick's vision is to have fun buildings again and dynamic and surprising. So can you talk a little bit about this philosophy and where that comes from? So I think this is the design ethos we had in the studio since uh, the beginning, how we can impact the society by doing uh, buildings that they were making people feel things. Uh, and it's very uh, curious when people visit old cities or any kind of city, they go to the city centers, to the old towns, because that's where the interesting things happen. Nobody's going to a new master plan or the <laughs> expansion side of a city. They want to see the old part. Uh, and we start analyzing why is that? And we start seeing it's because they are more human centric. They respect the human scale much better. They have uh, the three scales from the city context, the street context and the door scale. And it's focusing on the details. So people start feeling that that's where it should be belonging. And in the 20th century, we were having all these um, international movement that it was changing the architecture completely. And we have masters of that. But then it was decaying in the sense that people tried to copy them because it was simpler, but they were not getting the philosophy. And then we get all the cities anywhere in the world that they look exactly the same. So they don't have any attachment to the roots or the heritage culture. Yeah, and I know Ederwick, so Thomas Ederwick, which is the, the founder of the firm, if I'm right, I think he wrote a couple of books. Maybe it was an effort by the entire team to kind of explain the, this philosophy as well. I'll try to add the link to uh, in the video description. So um, maybe some people are familiar with Ederwick's work, maybe some are not. So I think we should move on to your screen. And I'm sure that you will show a couple of the great projects uh, about that. So now we can see uh, your screen, Alfonso. Yeah, so as you were saying, Nick, I'm coming from Heatherwick Studio. We are a design firm, so we can do chairs like this one where everybody's spinning and having fun. Uh, moving on, I think I can skip this one. You were doing a pretty good job just introducing myself. Uh, so I'm an architect. I joined Heatherwick in 2015 and became the BIM manager after coming from Woods Wagon in 2018. Uh, and I have the experience in Spain, India, Chile, and UK. But uh, the studio, it's a team of 250 designers. We're based in central London, and we create buildings, spaces, landscape, master plans, objects, infrastructure. So basically, we are makers. Uh, we value the craftsmanship and making and never allow ourselves to get lost in this world of digital technology just for the sake of technology and management. And what we prioritize in our projects is to have the greatest positive social impact. And that's what is linked with a book, the humanized book. 
uh, and our motivation is to design soulful and interesting places that embrace the complexity of the world. So we have a very diverse portfolio. Uh, some of the buildings that we have uh, built in the UK, like the Bombay Sapphire, the Jean Distillery, Culture of Yard is very close to our office. Uh, Google uh, KGX, we did this with uh, BIG. This was a cool partnership. And then the learning hub that we have in Singapore, it's a university. And we're now doing the Chengi Airport with KPF in Singapore. And if we move to some singular projects that uh, we have recently opened is the Hudson Yard vessel in New York. Uh, it's reopening to the public now, so people can go back into this uh, sculpture and uh, appreciate it. The Google uh, headquarters in Bayview that we were doing with uh, Big again. And uh, Little Island in New York, this floating part that uh, in the Hudson River. And very close to that, we have the London House, this uh, residential tower that it's like inflated.